greetings and felicitations. Hip, hip, hurrah, tally-ho. Hey, my little biscuit. Hey, Puddin. Hey, let's talk about this silent movie classic from 1925, Phantom of the Opera. Let's talk about the details. Directed by Rupert Julian. Uncredited, though, Lon Chaney was involved in the direction, interestingly enough. Ernest Lamel and Edward Sedwick as were also involved. It was based on The Phantom of the Opera. It was a serialized story in 1909-1910 by Gaston LaRue, starring The Man of a Thousand Faces, Lone Chaney, Norman Carey, and Mary Philbin. It was produced by Jewel Productions and distributed by Universal Pictures. The New York premiere was September 6, 1925, and depending on which cut you view, it could be 93 minutes to 107 minutes. Silent movie, but the box office took in $2 million. What'd you think about it? I like this movie. It was so so a silent film and a horror film. Mm-hmm. And it, it was very well done. And the visuals and makeup were really top notch. Yeah, you're not kidding. It's one of those movies, and I've said this about some of the black and white horror movies yeah it's considered a horror but in many ways it's a tragedy it's about someone who has a disfigurement he's trying to live life but there are some horror elements to it but i think during that time period lone cheney's makeup was so incredibly convincing that it was known to shock audiences yeah yeah that that makeup was really good um, and also being a tragedy, I mean, in some ways it, it's in the romance category as well. The, good, the sort of, the point. failed yes, romance. Yes. 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 Uh, talking about Lone Chaney's incredible makeup, Mary Philbin, she never saw Lone Chaney's face without the makeup. All the scenes previous, he had his mask on with the veil. So when he unmasked himself, her reaction was based on reality because it was that exact moment when she saw what he looked like underneath. How cool was that to keep that under wraps to the main actress? It was a great idea. Yeah, and I, I love to hear things like that in movies. You you do hear about movie making where they, they do things like that, something mm-hmm. where the actor's reaction is real, and um, and, and it works. It's a, it's a, a great um, plot device to use by the, by the director to have it done that way. Yes. Lon Chaney wanted to test... His makeup skills, you got to remember, Lone Chaney was a true pioneer in the world of cinema makeup. He used not only prosthetics, but also inserts on his teeth, which were extremely painful to use. But he wanted to see the effect if it would work. So he asked the film's cameraman, Charles Van Enger, into his dressing room. And when he came into his dressing room, Lon Chaney appeared behind him, and the cameraman said, I almost wet my pants, I was so afraid. <laughs> so so that was what he used. He used him as a guinea pig to say, would this be convincing? And it sure was. I think I would be scared, too, if I saw that in real life. <laughs> and I can't imagine what it looked like for real, because, it, you know, we only saw it in black and white, but the people who saw it in real life, it might have been even scarier. We know Gregory Peck is said to have watched that when it came out, and he was nine years old. And he said he was so afraid when he came home that he had to go sleep in his grandmother's bed with her because he was afraid of the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, wow. Yeah, it'll get you in your sleep. (laughs) It's interesting that part of this opera house was filmed inside Stage 28. I mean, it's one of the, and it's still to this day, nearly a century old, it's one of the oldest standing interior film sets in the world. I mean, Universal Studios, we, we credit them as being the, the, the backbone of what we love about classic horror movies. They set the standard in so many ways. So it's interesting. It was, yeah, this was an American made film, but it's supposed to take place at the, the, the Paris Opera House. Mm-hmm. And, and they tried to make it, uh, similar as far as the, the layout. Yes. I remember when I was collecting Famous Monsters of Filmly and Magazine, one of my earliest focuses were to get everyone with a cover of Phantom of the Opera. Because Phantom of the Opera, I think, is one of my favorite. The top, Phantom of the Opera and Frankenstein 
are my top favorite universal monsters. And I love the, the phantom story. Both of them are tragedies in different ways. They're, they're product of their environment and circumstances. But, but like you said, it's a romance. There, there's layers to this story. It's not just cut and dry. And I think that's why it has so many different interpretations as well. We look at this, this early version of it from 1925. It still stands the test of time nearly a hundred years later. But we look at the theater. Broadway play adapted on the Gaston LaRoe story, which is absolutely beautiful to see that. Iron Maiden made a song about it. There, there's so much to this story. I mean, were, were there things in there that touched you with regards to the story that you just said, wow, this is so awesome? When he kidnapped the, the girl that he loved and she was almost coming around to him until she saw his face. Mm-hmm. I mean, that... That was the most gut wrenching part of the movie. You you think that I mean you know, she she had to be flattered that he loved her and yet she was so scared of him, because well just because he kidnapped her in the first place, but she was warming up to him. But then, seeing what he really looked like and it was oh it was terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean you had to mm-hmm. you had to feel for her yes. there and you had yes. to feel sorry for him too. Yes. I mean what what could he do that that that's who he who he was he couldn't hide it. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And you know what sold us on this too is being a silent film, the actors' movements had to be more extreme, more expressive. Now, Lon Chaney did have an advantage because he was a child of parents that were deaf and mute. So he learned to be expressive with his hands early on in childhood. And we see that his motions carry on through this film, and they're so convincing. That that's an interesting point. So so he could do that, do do those movements with his hands, and, and also being the being the villain in the movie. That that's something that's it's another unique way that he expressed himself in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and talking about the 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 amazing mastery of his art. So it's the performance that he's a master of. The he was part of the directing. He wanted to direct the unmasking part of, of that scene. But also his makeup. He figured out how to take egg make membranes, put them in his eyeballs to give them a cloudy look. I mean, he was just such an innovator. Amazing. And to think today we just use prosthetics or yeah. computer animation. That's right. That's right. Yes. I mean, he was going to to the extreme. He wanted his makeup to resemble a skull, which I think he did a good job of. But he actually attached a strip of fish skin, like a translucent part of the fish skin, to his nostrils with spirit gum and then pulled it back. So it it, it had more of like a – just, just a, a strangeness to his face. He was really experimenting constantly, gluing his ears back to get a different shape to his face. So his makeup – was on so many different layers and so experimental in so many ways. I mean, he, he's he's a master of what he did. So, it, and it sounds like he used pieces from uh, from animal type things. Yes, yes. I mean, that's such a, a unique idea, and you know, it was, it was so brave and like, oh, and and it must have smelled bad too. On the, <laughs> being Think about you know, yeah. now that you're saying that working with him must have been an experience. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And and I know I, I saw another Phantom of the Opera movie that was made after this where that the Phantom didn't look as scary. They just used like the the half mask mm-hmm, similar to what mm-hmm, was used on Broadway. Mm-hmm. So this is a, a very different production. That the the first time they they made a movie out of this novel, they they really wanted it to be scary. Um, another thing about the story, I mean, why why was he so in love with this one woman? It was like an obsession. Yeah, and and. I, th- I think it was never explained, really. It's just something that, that you just know. And, and he, he only worshipped her from afar at first. To fall in love with her, he must have just seen her, like, like as a background character on stage because she wasn't the star. He was trying to make her the star. I, th- I think they, they did the try to say. The threatening parts of it, that was horrifying. Yeah. There was, there was violence involved in it, that the scene with the crashing down of the chandelier. I mean, there's so many parts of this movie that you have to give credit for something that came out nearly a hundred years ago. 
they were really firing on all cylinders when it came to creativity and doing something on a large and massive scale. Even adding some color elements in the middle when there was that masquerade. Yeah, trying to have a different effect、mm-hmm. to show that it was there was at a party or people were supposed to be happy. But you knew something was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that was cool. But you knew something was going to happen, and、mm-hmm. and they did say that this guy Eric was was insane. So that must be part of the reason for his obsession and his actions. It would have been neat if they didn't say that, just to see, <laughs> just to to get a different reaction about him. Yeah, one of my top Universal movies of all time. I never get tired of rewatching it because we see something different every time. We view it. Beautiful cinematography, fantastic makeup. Love the just the motion of everything and emotion. Give this huge thumbs up. It's a classic story that everyone's that everyone knows now, and it still holds up today. Thumbs up. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long. And may the force be with you, Nanu Nanu. Nanu, Nanu.